Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 288 of Weekly Poker Hand. Let's take a look at another fun hand from the 10-25 game from Best Bet Jacksonville. The action is Fast and Furious. They're actually playing 5-10-25, I see. Here we have a... Well, we'll figure it out in just a second. We have a raise to 125 from the cutoff from Brandon. There we go. We have a raise to 125 with 6-5 offsuit. And look, in this situation with George in the small blind, George is getting after it, okay? He is raising a lot, 3-betting a lot, calling a lot. When you're against an opponent who plays too many hands too aggressively, either you should fight fire with fire and be willing to 4-bet, 5-bet, 6-bet, whatever. But 6-5 offsuit doesn't really do so well with that type of action. Or you should just play better hands than average so that you stand to have an edge. And well, 6-5 ballsuit doesn't do that either. So 6-5 ballsuit and the cutoff just needs to fold. So anyway, in this situation, here we have Brandon raising 6-5 offsuit, and then Shane, who I don't know anything about, on the button, 3 bets to 400 with 10-7 of clubs, which I actually think is fine because that's going to get George to fold out a lot of the time, right? You get the crazy person out of the pot. And then you also get to play in position against Brandon with a hand that's going to be relatively disguised. So I like three betting in this scenario a lot. Shane is also, by the way, playing $45,000 deep, which covers George. One thing I will definitely say is that when you are going to be out of position against the big stack on average, you want to have a shallow stack because chips flow to the left and no limit hold them. Even if your opponent is not a good player at all, if they're playing loose, aggressive, splashy, you do not want to be out of position against them when deep stacked because they're going to put you in a terrible, terrible spot. We've discussed this a few times now over the last few episodes of Weekly Poker Hand, and, you know, George is really having his way with the table because he is getting to apply a lot of aggression and put them in tough spots. And when that is the case, don't sit in that seat. Get up and move to the seat that has position on the other deep stack, or just play shallower stacks so you don't find yourself in terrible scenarios out of position. Anyway, um, Shane does three bet. And now George has pocket queens in the small blind and elects to just flat call. Now, I definitely think he needs to go ahead and four bet. Even playing forty or $35,000 deep at uh, 5, 10, 25. What is that? I can't even count that high. So like four, 1,300 big blinds deep. Even 1,300 big blinds deep, queens are going to be the best hand almost every time. If you get 5-bet, you can call and go from there. Like, you're just fine getting money in the pot, especially when your opponents think you, that you are maniacal. So I would have uh, go ahead and put in the re-raise, but he just calls, which is fine. Don't get me wrong, because, you know, kind of like I was saying earlier, Shane doesn't want to be out of position against the deep stack. Well, neither does George. So George does like to flat call and keep the pot manageable. And... Brandon calls as well off of his $5,000 stack, and I think this is definitely a mistake. Um, even closing the action, 6-5 offsuit is not a good hand. This is a situation where you'd much prefer just to get out of the way. So I think Brandon stuck around a little bit too much in this hand. Perhaps he's getting frustrated because everybody else is getting to play every pot. Why isn't he? <laughs> so anyway, flop comes 9-7-2, two. two spades. No player has a flush draw. And it goes check, check, check pretty quickly. So George checked his overpair out of position, which I think is fine. Shane checked his bad gut shot to the preflop raiser, Brandon, who checked it back with a middle pair. And I think you probably want to go ahead and just bet here. I get the idea that on 9-7-2, you really don't want to be betting all that frequently. But this 9-7 is going to be the best hand a lot of the time. And if you bet and get raised, you can just fold. The problem is that if it goes check, check, check on the turn, almost every turn is, or on the flop, almost every turn is going to be very bad for the 10-7, right? Even a low card could just randomly give someone a set or um, yeah, an additional draw. So I think you'd rather just go ahead and bet and clean up your equity, recognizing that if you do get raised, you probably just need to fold because you're going to be against a lot of draws and made hands. Anyway, check, check, check. And one of the safest cards in the deck comes off for, um, well, Shane and George. George, it's the two of clubs, so nine, seven, two, two. It's pretty unlikely either player has a two in a re-raised pot, right? So over pairs are definitely good. Even middle pairs probably good. And especially given we've seen George be overly active so far over the last few episodes of Weekly Poker Hand, you're not folding middle pair against him, that's for sure. 
So now pot is 1,225. George is first with his pocket queens and he bets 1,000, which I think is quite nice. I definitely like a big bet size. There are a lot of draws here. And this is a situation where he would like to bet a lot of his draws. Um, he also probably doesn't have all that many really strong made hands, you wouldn't think, even though he does have queens, which means he could probably have kings and maybe jacks and maybe tens and maybe ace nine and maybe king nine, right? He very easily could have a lot of decently strong hands here. Um, but you wouldn't think he has a lot of those, right? So anyway, he bets 1,000, uh, 6-5 offsuit folds, and 10-7 uh, from Shane makes a pretty quick call, which I think is good. I would never fold the middle pair here. And I'm planning to call down on a lot of blank rivers. And the river is a complete blank. It is the three of clubs. So Shane is pretty much on the hook to call any amount that George bets in my mind. So the question then becomes, how much should George bet? These players have seen George run triple barrel bluff so far and also make bets for value, you know, sizable value bets. So this is a situation where George can definitely get away with making a large bet. So the pot is 3,225. I would like a 3,000 bet. I could even see making something like a $5,000 bet being very, very sweet here because when Shane checks back the flop and calls the turn, he almost certainly has a marginal made hand. Marginal made hands are very unlikely to raise you on this river. If you bet the river and get raised, you can still call with the pocket queens, right? Because for all we know, Shane maybe has a hand like Jack-10 that decided to float the turn with the idea of uh, bluffing the river, right? So this is a situation where I think George has a really, 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 really good hand. And he also has a perfect image to get away with making a big river bet purely for value. He has the best hand almost always. You have to assume aces or kings would bet the flop. And if you do blast the river for 5,000, aces or kings would just call it anyway. So it's not like you're going to get raised all that often and face a tough spot. So I definitely love the idea of just using a very polarized strategy in this scenario, value betting with something like pocket tens or better, and um, uh, some busted draws. And to be fair, maybe you shouldn't even bet with busted draws given how his image is, it looks pretty maniacal, right? Whenever you have a maniacal image, either because you have purposely cultivated that or because you just happen to have been playing a lot of pots recently, when that is the case, and it will happen to everyone if you are in there playing pots, you really wanna make sure that you just continue getting maximum value when you actually have a good hand. So in this scenario with a 3,200 pot with very deep stacks remaining, I like a big bet and I think I would've gone something like 5,000 for, for a 1.7 times pot bet. And uh, depending on any sort of dynamics these two players have together, right? I don't know if these players play together or know each other or anything like that. But if they do have a very battling dynamic, I could even see like a $10,000 bet being really sweet. Um, <laughs> that said, when you bet 10,000, you start to risk getting jammed on every once in a while. You really don't want to get jammed on because then you actually could be beat. Uh, that, that would be fun to bet 10,000 on the river for 3x pot and then get shoved on as a bluff. That would be, that would be fun. So anyway, George is making a bet. Let's see how much he bets. He goes only 1,300. And I think this is probably a mistake. And the reason is because, again, like I said, all the draws miss. And when all the draws miss, uh, you really do want to be betting with some busted draws and your best hands and certainly has queens. A queen's are like the, one of the best hands you can have. Um, he may be thinking for some reason that Shane has a whole lot of ace high specifically in his range. If he thinks Shane has a whole lot of ace king type hands in his range, then I guess I get the idea of betting small. But even then, ace king beats all the draws, right? So even ace-king here should be hero calling pretty frequently, especially when you don't block the busted flush draw. So if you have like ace-king of hearts, for example, and you decided to call the turn bet, it's a pretty easy call on the river, really, for any any bet size whenever it's 9 7 2, two 3 when the flush draw misses. So this is a spot where I think Shane, I think George um, leaves a little bit of money on the table, and probably a lot of money on the table. And uh, Shane's just on the hook. He has to call. It's a little bit unfortunate he has the 10 of clubs here because that blocks some straight draws, but whatever. Got to call. And Shane does call, and he loses another pot to George, who is just uh, cleaning up whenever he makes good hands. And you're going to find that whenever you do play a maniacal strategy, you win a lot of money whenever you make good hands. So don't be afraid to get in there and battle, especially if um, you know your opponents are aware and they're paying attention and they'll pay you off. And you know, good players realize, all right, middle pair here is pretty good. I have to pay. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like my work, click like, click subscribe, leave a review if you are listening to this on the very po various podcast players. That goes a long way to help 
the computer algorithms help other people find me. We have to help the computers help themselves by giving them good information. Just like game theory optimal solvers are kind of useless if you don't know the right inputs, so is uh, the internet. <laughs> so help me out. Good luck in your games, have fun, and I'll talk to you next week.